So this is something that has been bothering me. Uh, I've been around the internet checking out what people with SPD are saying and sharing and there's something that comes up quite often and that is people who don't feel like this should be considered a disorder or a mental health issue at all. And the argument comes from them thinking that because they are self-sufficient, they feel like they are in control and living just fine, they can't see why this can be problematic. They feel like this is more like a lifestyle choice. And that is concerning, so I wanted to address it. I'm all for the idea of a positive life, and I see where they're coming from. It's part of who we are. We feel safe within ourselves, and that's how this disorder came to be, really, to keep us safe. But in order to accomplish that, it creates some patterns and behaviors that can really mess you up in the long run. And I have been through that. So let me tell you about it, how I got diagnosed and why. I think it's a good example for this. My SPD started to show up as an adult. Now looking back I can see some stuff that makes sense from previous years, but it only started to become an issue in my early 20s. I went to university, I dropped out, I got a job, I quit. I could not stick to anything really. I was super inconsistent. I, I kept jumping from one thing to another. I kept pushing people away. At the time I considered myself an introvert. So I will use that as an excuse to justify my behavior. And you know, it's not that uncommon for people that age to be a little bit lost. So I didn't pay much attention to it. I thought I will eventually find my own career, my own path or whatever. Years went by and I was now past my mid-twenties and I was still as aimless as ever, if not worse. I could not hold a show for long and now that was a big issue because I had to sustain myself, right? Since I had successfully pushed everyone away at this point, I had zero contact, which didn't help. So even getting a show was proving quite difficult. So at this point I knew something was off. I went unemployed for a while, so when I was finally able to get one, I knew I had to stick with it no matter what this time. And I did. In fact, it was the one I lasted the longest ever. It was an administration, so I was in an open office with tons of people around, a lot of interaction, which wasn't great. Something I could do by myself, some type of freelance would have been better, but sometimes we don't get to pick, and I had no plan B, so it wasn't going great. But I had to break the pattern, so I kept pushing myself. With time, it started to take a toll on me. I would get back home with these really strong headaches almost every day. And then they did this restructuring on the company, so I got what I call an unwanted promotion. They would pay me a lot more than before, but I had to work for three to four hours more, which meant on top of my three hour commute, since I lived in the outskirts, I would wake up before the sun was up and I would arrive home and only had time for dinner and shower before I was back to bed. And the extra money, as nice as it was, I didn't really need it. I had no hobbies, no interest, anything at all. But I didn't have an option. It was either that or losing the job, and I could not afford that, so I tried. But at this point I was leaving for a job that made me miserable. I was forced to be around people, interacting with them 24-7, and there was nothing outside that that gave me any relief. It was too much. In the end, I shut down, and I quit. I had some money saved up, since, like I said before, I didn't have anything to spend it on, really. So I live up from that for a while. But even though I was now free to do whatever I wanted, and I had all days to myself, I just could not get out of that state. That feeling of emptiness never went away. I was in this pit that, now looking back, I understand it was a heavy depression that crept up on me. And that's the thing. Apathy, lack of interest and motivation, detachment. Some of these symptoms for telling a depression are so natural for us that sometimes you just don't see it coming. Dealing with depression is already hard on its own. Then you throw some of our traits in the mix and the results 
aren't pretty. I was completely isolated at this point, my money was running out, so I was about to end up on the street. And I didn't even care. Then, I don't know if it was sheer luck or she was keeping an eye out, but my mother showed up. She saw the state I was in and she took me back to her place. With time I started to get a little bit better. I think simple things like helping around the house, taking care of my mom's dog, things like that really helped me get into motion again. And since I was living under her roof and taking her food, I agreed to go to therapy in exchange, something that I had avoided my entire life. But I don't know if the guy wasn't taking me seriously, maybe I wasn't giving him enough stuff to work with, it didn't work. Now looking back I understand, therapists are people like any other, so sometimes you won't get along, or the way they approach things doesn't work for you, so it might take a few tries until you find the right one, or just give it more time to build some confidence. That being said, back then this bad experience only reassured me that therapy was a waste of time. And then fucking life happened. Economic crisis, my mother was planning her retirement, and the people at the school she worked for more than 30 years were trying to screw her up for some reason, so things weren't going well, she had to put the family house on sale, this led into a lot of other shit, and then the icing on the cake, they found a tumor on my sister's brain. So things went downhill. My family was collapsing. My mother was on the fucking brink and this was the only person that was always there for me, that always supported me. She saved me from being homeless, really. If there ever was a time for me to step up, it was this time. But not only I could not give them the emotional support they needed, I could not help them financially either. In fact, I was a burden at that. One thing was to fuck up my own life, but to make things worse for my mother and my sister who were already having a rough time. So I fell back into that depression pit again, and this time I hit hard. I was so tired at this point, tired of not knowing what a real connection with someone feels like, tired of not getting an emotional reward out of anything I did. I tried to rationalize it in every way I could, I tried to ignore it, I tried to let it run free, I tried to fix it, but nothing worked. I was so fucking tired. You know when you go through the motions of life like you're not even there, this suicide ideation is always there around the corner. Sometimes it was just this fuzzy afterthought. I barely even noticed, but suddenly the right conditions were there, and it took hold of me. So I tried. I tried to kill myself. I'm here, so spoilers, you know how that went. But in any case, it is what forced me to do therapy for good this time, and eventually getting a diagnosis which was a relief in a way. I know for a lot of people it's stressful to find out you have some type of disorder, but to finally be able to put a finger on whatever I was struggling for so many years, it felt nice. Things are a little bit better now. I've been trying to get out there, learn as much as I could after this. That's the reason I started this channel. A different turn of events and I wouldn't be here. And yes, I might not be a fucking beacon of empathy, but I don't want for someone else to go through that. So you see how I don't like when people dismiss the potential harm this disorder might bring. It's classified as a disorder for a reason. And I'm not saying that if you're a schizo you are destined to end up like this, no. But I think it's important to understand that that is a path that life might push you through, whatever you intend it or not. I'm sure anyone can experience depression or go through a hard time in their life, but the thing is we might not be as well equipped as others to deal with that. Things like relationships to rely upon and interpersonal communication are all regarded by the medical community as key tools 
to deal with depression and suicidal thoughts. And for this disorder, that's something that comes up often. You might not always notice it. For some, it is just a thin shadow in the background. For others, it is an oppressive presence. Either way, it is something that most of us experience sooner or later. There was a study recently about that. I will put the link down below if you want to check it out. They basically found a significant connection between schizoid personality symptoms and more severe and serious suicide attempts. This is just one study, so it has limitations. I wish there were more to compare and contrast. Sadly, we don't get that luxury. But even then, I think it's just another example to throw out there to highlight the more negative effects this disorder can bring. On a more positive note, I think consciousness about mental health is on the rise. Things like depression are taken more seriously nowadays. And disorders like DID and schizophrenia, who were always stigmatized and still are, but they are getting a lot of more positive exposure out there, especially thanks to social media and stuff like that, which is great. And if these trends keep going, it can eventually lead to more research on personality disorders, especially and hopefully on the ones that are a little bit on the shade, like ours. I think I should wrap this up now, it's getting long. So again, to accept yourself for who you are, it's super important. But remember, this is a disorder, and as such there are unhealthy patterns and behaviors that come with it. So to truly accept yourself, you have to embrace the good and the bad. You might feel safe and content, but you know, from working in stability to being badly insured in bed or sick and not having anyone around to take care of you, from depression to suicidal thoughts, these things can hit you pretty hard. So keep an eye out, be aware of that. I think that's all I wanted to say really. Take care of yourself, be safe. Bye.